Hello, I'm Ernie Conover. This month, we're going to do a spindle turning project called the hollow form. It is a kitchen canister, which is spindle turned. The grain goes up and down in this piece rather than across it like in a normal bowl. It is a lidded container with a tenon that fits inside the opening snugly and will hold it well enough to lift the canister. This will ensure that coffee or tea or something like this will stay fresh inside of it. We're going to start with a 5 inch square by 9 inch long block of wood. This one actually is 4 and 7 eighths, which is exactly the base diameter of the one that I turned a few years ago for my wife. And this one may well come out a sixteenth or so under that. I won't tell if you don't. Our first job is just to turn this around. I've gotten a nice cylinder. I have a slight check in this piece, but I've put super glue in that. It's hard to get a piece of wood this big that you don't have a check in. Good reason to turn this from green wood, which will be easier. Yeah, it'll warp a little bit. That'll actually make the lid fit better because you can turn it a little bit and it'll lock. We now have to make a 3 8 inch long by 2 and a half inch diameter tenon on each end of this. I've made a cut with a parting tool in about a third of the diameter at five and an eighth inch from what will be the base of our canister. The next step is to taper from here to here to a diameter of about four and three eighths or in this case four and five sixteenths just at the top of the canister. I have everything pretty much the way I want it. The last step in turning the base of the canister is to part these two pieces off from each other. I have this running nice and true. My first job is a tricky little cut to start on this edge and just cut nicely across here through all of this end grain and smooth this out. And this leaves a nice finish for the top of the canister. Now we need to begin hollowing it out. And we're going to set our rest to a little below center so that when we set a spindle gouge on it, it's exactly on center. We're going to then push it into the middle like that and with our left hand we'll pull it sideways gently. And it needs to be rolled from the vertical just slightly or it'll catch. You'll find the right spot in there by wiggling it around a little. Always starting in the exact center and dragging that gouge sideways with your left hand. Things are progressing very nicely. As we get deeper and deeper, and I'm about two-thirds of the depth now, it gets more difficult to control this cut because you have more and more tool hanging out there. I'm now going to get out a much bigger spindle gouge that will have a little more rigidity this far off the tool rest. I believe it's time to go sharpen my gouge. You can see how much better the gouge cuts now that I've sharpened it. Quite a bit less chatter, 
better finish inside. You must keep the guard gouge sharp. Also, I'm not taking nearly as deep a cut. Where I started out taking an eighth of an inch at a time, I'm down to a sixteenth or less. The last few inches will be a lot of work. I'm now down to a depth of about three and a half inches. I have another inch to go. But it's time to clean up these walls a little bit. And I'm going to do that with a heavy scraper that I've ground an angle on so that I can go down the side wall just like this. I don't, however, want to touch this to the very bottom because that put a lot of pressure on it. I want to stay just off the bottom. I'm going to raise the rest a little bit to scrape right about there. Very nice even wall thickness. I will keep it straight for a little ways here so that the tenon fits nicely. It's now time to sand the inside. I'm starting with 80 bit paper. And a good trick to get down in the bottom is just take a tool handle and tape some sandpaper around it. This allows me to go across the bottom. I've got it folded over here so it will follow the bottom. I've sanded this 80, 120, and 180 grits. You can see the curly structure starting to come out. It's nice inside, nice outside. Might as well put the first coat of finish while I'm here on it. And it can be drying while I'm working on the lid. Another great finish for canisters is uh, System 3 Clear Coat, which is an A and B epoxy type finish. It's food safe and dries very hard. A good oil finish such as water locks uh, is also food safe if it has gassed off for 30 days. You really have to wait 30 days for all the volatiles to come out of it for it to be food safe. Our coat of finish has dried overnight and is well on its way to being cured. So it's now time to make the lid which we'll make from this piece that we cut from the canister itself. To do that, we will unchuck the canister, chuck up the lid, and turn a tenon on the end of it, which is a press fit with the inside of the canister. I have just the fit I'm looking for. I'm now going to use that as a chuck to hold the canister while I turn away the chucking tenon. Just what I'm looking for. Now this little nubbin, I won't attempt to turn away. I'll simply chisel it away or sand it away later. We're now turning a big lazy bead that's steep on this side and very gentle on the top side. There, I'm just touching my line. detail that I like is to hollow out in here and take some wood out. It makes the whole thing lighter and more delightful to pick up. I've sanded everything up nice. I have everything looking good. The canister fits well. 
good friction fit with the lid. So it's time to part this from the chuck. I'm going to show you how to put this in another chuck and make this perfect. However, if you want to skip that step, you can with intelligent use of a random orbital sander, just sand this out and fare it out beautifully. It's your choice. But being a turner, I like to turn it if I can. I've taken what until a few minutes ago was a piece of firewood and bandsawed a piece out of it, mounted it on a faceplate, turned it round and faced it level. It is faceplate turning, the grain is running this way. The next task is to turn a tapered recess in here. I've already hollowed it out a bit with a bowl gouge. And we'll use a little square end scraper for that. We'll raise our rest, go above center, and we're just going to go in like this. Now take a little wooden mallet and just tap that into place and kind of tap it around till it runs true. Now we'll go to our spindle gouge. I have everything sanded out nice, it's looking good. I'll now use a gasket scraper to reach under there and pry that out. Check the fit. It's good. I'm getting a nice pop fit. You could have quite a bit of tea or coffee in there and still stay on tight. I really encourage you to do your first canister both at smaller size and in green wood you will find that it goes much easier. Simply have the size of this canister for a starting one and then get bigger as your skill increases. If you haven't given hollow forms a try, give this canister a go. It's a lot of fun and a useful thing to have in the kitchen when you're done. This is Ernie Conover saying thanks for visiting.